Hello and welcome to the TT Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk to one person from the world of the TT to discuss their lives, their journey, their ambitions. I don't know if this man will have any ambitions at the TT anymore, <laughs> so I may, maybe not. But anyway, we are going to chat about their relationship with the greatest motorsport event in the world. Alongside me, as ever, Steve Plater. Hello, Steve. Hello, mate. Listen, we're getting closer and closer to the to the TT 2023 first day of practice. Like, are you, are you starting to get a little bit of feeling in your stomach? Do you know what? I'm really looking forward to it. I am, you know. I mean, you're always, you're always kind of praying for good weather, but, you know, there's so many different things going on behind the scenes uh, of, of what's going on for TT 23, a few surprises, and, you know, it's all going to be a little bit different. Oh, give us a surprise. What have we got? No, various different things from what do people you know that we jumping don't? on different bikes and one or two people wanting to do the TT and people stepping away. I mean, there's, there's all sorts going on in the, in the background. But the main thing is you're still going to be there. I'll be there. With a mic in hand. Yeah, faster than ever with a microphone. Are you looking forward to standing on pit lane again? Hey, I, lo- I love that. I do, you know, because it. For me, I want to go different places, not just pit lane, you know, some some really kind of iconic places around the course where it really shows off the speed. Go on then. Give us your top three places where, where you'd like to go and uh, commentate from. I'd like, I'm not about commentate, but just kind of introduce riders coming through and around. One is Conquer Trees. I'd like a shot of uh, the camera on me as, as they come past the tree. That'd be unbelievable. What, where's really... Conquer Trees? Oh, do you know what? I can't answer that. Brilliant. I can't answer it. <laughs> um, it's on, obviously... First half, second half, like, whereabouts? Give me a sector. You're kind of heading... You're halfway round, really. It's on the ginger all through to Ramsey, but it's, right. um, it's a real rough section. There's a big K on the tree. All right, so you're talking about the K tree. You know what I mean, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, I do know. Uh, there's one. Gorsley is another one, which is an incredibly fast place, and I think most Ooh. riders hold their breath through there. I lost the front there in 2009 on the Superstock bike, but managed to stay on. Um, incredible, okay. real fast, fast place. Right and, uh, but really shows the speed off of the TT, yeah, which yeah. obviously we all know cameras don't really do that too mm-hmm. much. But yeah, so there's quite a few places I'd like to go um, just to kind of give the public a real good idea of how fast these guys are going. Because you get all giddy. Ooh. All flipping Ooh, look at that blooming egg. Hey, makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, obviously. And, and just remember that you used to do that as well. Yeah, that's even standing on pit lane when yeah. we do things down there. You know, I think, God, oh, flipping heck, was I daft enough to be doing this? Most most riders say that though, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Right. Mm. Shall we? Uh, shall we get on on to our guest? Because this this one is exciting, and I'm slightly worried that we're not even going to mention the TT here, because this man was a teammate to to my idol Kevin Schwantz back in the day. When GP, I'm not saying GP riders aren't special nowadays, but they were a special breed back then. Two stroke 500s, the world at their feet, adulation. These guys were the, the, the rock stars of the motorcycle world, weren't they? He's got a massive history. Two strokes, four strokes, Grand Prix, road racing. Um, you know, he's done so much winning. He's one of those really annoying blokes that's good at everything from golf to riding motorbike, anything. Is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, just quickly on, on the last episode, you did mention that you. You shared a bed with him, and you went on holiday with him. Is what kind of a relationship have you guys got? Don't get jealous. Well, I'm a little bit. <laughs> Shall we get him on? Let's get him out. <laughs> so, for those um, those not listening, you need to be watching this. But I'm um, I'm just going to put my uh, iPad up because on here we've got a list that just goes on and on and on of. Uh, Results, managerial career, all sorts to talk about, all sorts to go through. Let me give you some highlights. Seven starts at the TT, four finishes, three in first place, one in third. 500cc World Championships, 71 races, World Superbikes, British Superbikes, other road races, as well as, you know, the successful managerial career. Now, most of the, the listeners and viewers from this era of racing probably didn't know you had such a... An a, a illustrious uh, racing career. It was. Don't don't uh-huh. don't pretend it wasn't. Crap trials rider. Well, crap uh, trials rider. Easy, Steve. You know better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of people will will, will know you as uh, team manager. Yeah. No. Totally. Um, and in my head, I'm still I'm still young at their level. So I'm thinking, why don't you know? But <laughs> you know, I'm another generation. But 
Um, yeah, it just um, had a great time. You know, you know, and I was very lucky to get where I got, and I was sort of uh, the fat boy did well. I was always too big. You know, I was always <laughs> I was having to push a bit harder. The Petrucci but, of the eighties, would well, we say? Well, I was. Yeah, I was. He was probably taller than me, but I was 13, 13 stone was my best racing weight. Bloody so hell. I was giving away probably five stone, well, four stone. And how hard was that to get to 13 oh, stone? Every day running my heart out and <laughs> skipping those flapjacks. And that's why I'm addicted to flapjacks now. That's why I love it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go, let's go back to TT first before okay. we get into everything else. Because, okay. like I say, I'm sure we're going to be here for hours chatting about this. But the first question we always ask the guests when they come on, especially riders that have, that have raced, and you'll have to cast your mind back a little while, is... Um, is being on that start line, getting that hand on that shoulder, getting ready to go, waiting for that flag to drop, waiting for that tap. When you think back to those times, what are the feelings that come up? What What do you well, think about? It's, it is unreal real for all the miles I've done and the racing I've done. The TT is still the one which is so etched in your memory. It's crazy. Yeah. And um, it's still it's a bit grey, obviously, but the whole, the whole um, race day... Um, Nerves and feeling is so ingrained in Steve knows ingrained. Just the waiting in the paddock area, waiting for them to to push you out onto the road. It starts building up, and I raced at number nineteen and twenty, uh, which is in hindsight, I don't know why I really did that. It was quite tough numbers to race. Um, so you know, I'm not the first one away. So I'm, so it's building up, and then I don't know. You just so pent up. There's there's so much adrenaline going. I always. I always started the race, and you can't do it nowadays, I, I don't think, from what I hear. I always started the race really quite easy. I used to, I had a plan of like getting past um, Grieber before I'd really start to, to go, just getting through, um, is it Braddon Bridge? And yeah. Just really, Up to you just know. really having a bit of respect for everything, because we didn't have any, really any tyre warmers or anything. It was just mm-hmm. brand new tyres, full tank of gas, and I never really went that hard until I'd sort of four or five miles under my belt. I don't think you can do that nowadays, but um, but then edging up, you know, seeing Joey was going and and Roger and all them boys were in front of me in those days, and you, you were you were, you're starting to get in the zone, and you sort of um, all the all the nerves <clears throat> and the distractions which you had when you first went out onto the Glen Country Road slowly sort of diminish to the point where it's you're looking down Bray Hill and you're waiting for the tap, and you you know. It, you can nearly hear yourself um, heart beating in your helmet yeah. and so on, and then the tap, and then it's away, and then it's that's it. You know, then he's just loving it. Yeah, you know, you just the the fear factor turns into like adrenaline and just such a rush, and that rush lasts you know a couple of hours. It does seem like it's a it's a click of the fingers as soon as you like you say that yeah that flag drops and you go the the, the just, mental state just, just it's changes. just you've got to just switch on and say I I, 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 I always had a plan. Of like definitely the sort of left hand of the tire and and I was really ever so cautious just to even right now I remember how I used to ride because there's Braddon Bridge and there's a couple of left really fast left sort of kink before you get into the into the village there and um, I remember having a bit of a slide once and I thought I've got to have a bit of respect here and make sure everything's totally right yeah before I can go and um, and then I, that's sort of my first mental was my first mental step and then and then. You know, making sure you're sweet, and I never went hard down Bray Hill. I did. I just had a lot of respect for it all, just sort of built into it. But I had that sort of plan in my mind, mm-hmm. and um, and I say once that flag drops, the plan's engaged, and and you just, I mean, you, you, I say I love it. I mean, I do. I did love it, but at the time, you're just so focused on what you're doing, and uh, that you just, it's just um, a process what you're going through, and you're yeah. just so alert. You know, you're just flipping. You've, you're alive, you know, and your brain's working a million seconds, you know, hitting every spot, making sure you've got the right gear shift and your right position on the bike and and, and you're away. And I just... guess that's what makes the TT so special in it, is even rolling up to that start line, when there's no one on there and you can see, you don't get to see everything from a braille, yeah. all you see is the road just yeah, disappear, disappear and it's just like a horizon. Yeah. And you just know what's laying ahead beyond all well, that. Well, like you say, you've been and stood there when there's nothing there. When you imagine the whole build-up of the whole morning and moving into the paddock area, talking to your mates, and s- slowly people are drifting off, to, and then it's it's just you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the whole build-up. That it's like an hour, isn't it? Really, it seems forever. But, you know, everyone wants to talk to you, a few interviews, and yeah. you sort of nip into the toilet, and you're trying to get, you know, you're trying to focus, stay away a little bit. 
bit of privacy and um and then and then he's just he just going come on let's get going you know let's, let's and I say what if a, if an earlier number would have probably just you know but yeah. like when I'm sat back and you're waiting you can see the guys you're racing with you can disappearing and the and the shooting off and you think oh I've got to you know I need to get going and I know I've got to catch them. What was the idea behind starting that that that? I didn't down? even think of it. I just that was my <clears> racing <throat> number at home. Yeah. And I just run nineteen, and I never even thought no more of no more of it. I mean, the TT, honestly, was just um, it was just it was a big stepping stone for me, and um, it was just something that I really loved. I loved doing it, but I never I never went looking. Oh, I'm going to win this. I'm going to dominate it. I never really thought like that. Right. I don't. Yeah, and um, you know, like going now, someone like a potential winner would never want to go from twenty. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but I never really thought about that. I just thought just get going and. And then they realise you catch you start to catch up with some faster guys, and he's been really hard work trying to get past, isn't it? I thought Roger Roger Marshall one year for for a long way, and I didn't pass him. He's so tricky to try and pass someone who's as fast as you. <laughs> yeah. How difficult was it? Because obviously you were used to mass starts, but you kind of I've explained this in my own story sometimes. But you kind of get up in the morning, wander around, then you have to walk up to the main road, throw your leg over the bike, and you've got to be on the pipe to try and win a race. Mm-hmm. How did you cope with that? Well, I think, like I say, the TT, I, I was riding the short circuit so well and I was so sharp um, that I was pretty much in the zone. I was probably probably the, the, one of the quickest guys on the short circuit going there and and um, I could probably back it off a little, a little bit level. And you know what TT's like, it's not like the short circuit, it's not as intense. You know, you leave, the, as soon as you've, the lights go green at Donington, you're just flipping on the edge. The TT... Well, I say I don't know. Nowadays, you see Peter Eichmann and boys. I don't know if they build into it anymore. But for me, I definitely built into it. So um, you, you're ready. It's a TT. You know, you've done the practice and you've you've set off from cold and built into it. It's race day now. You, you know, you've got to be ready and you've got to you've got to be switched on. And um, you know, it, like I say, I think because I was such a, a decent level and a fairly high level on the short circuits, I was doing Grand Prix in the last. The last TT I did, I, was, I flew in from the middle of a Grand Prix season, so I was so on fire with my riding um, that I was just ready for it, you know. And I just like I say, you just love it, don't you? You totally love it. <laughs> could, could you yeah. imagine? Could you imagine Mark Marquez or, or oh, anyone it, yeah. from the world of GP nowadays just saying, "Right, well, it's totally different." But oh, it um, is completely. But it's it's such yeah. a strange thing. Like yeah. back in the sixties, obviously it was part of the yeah. Grand Prix circuit. You had to do it. What were, yeah. what were the team's opinion of you? Obviously, they weren't that keen. They weren't that keen, but they knew um, they knew that it was part of my contract with um, Suzuki GB. And like I said, I had a bit of a I say I had a long term plan. Not really know if I did, but I, I definitely wanted to try and get to the GPs. When I won the TT in eighty three, it was a bit of a ticket to have a go on the five hundred. They they gave me five hundred at the end of the year to go to the Swan Series with it, and they were running a. The, the GB team was running Mamola and and the sort of second the the GP team. So there was a chance if I could make a great impression. If it took the road circuits and the TT especially to to. Um, to to get me in the good side with them and give me a chance that that's what I was prepared to do. Yeah. So I, I never really uh, I did have a plan of like I didn't want to do loads of TTs. I just wanted to to enjoy it and get the most out of it. And if it gave me a leg up, that's that's what was the plan. So then so I, I'm writing a few memoirs at, at home now and I look back and the '84 and '85 was the best time ever in, in my career. Because I had this little 500 team in, in 85, 84, 84, 85, uh, um, after the TT. And it was it was my little 500 team on a really shit box old Suzuki. <laughs> no, nobody wanted to ride him out. They, they pulled out two years earlier. So two years ago, I was riding like an ex-Randy bike. And Barry Sheen was my teammate. And um, they pulled out then. So there was all bits off the floor. So I ran that for another two years, just getting crap out of the scrap, the scrap bin. And... <laughs> So I had my own little team uh, going around Europe, and then we stopped in. Um, we stopped at, uh, and it was just like such a, a, a fantasy time. I, I I was this young kid going to GPs, and I was just busting my balls. I was riding like a crazy man on this uh, under. Uh, powered Suzuki, which was written off. It was no one's riding Suzuki, and I was getting on the front row, and I was uh, having having a blast, and they were like, "Who's this flipping big 
<laughs> big English man, you know, <laughs> on this old Suzuki. So how old, how old were you at the time? I was, uh, well, it was 1984, 84, 85, <coughs> so I was like 22, 23. Right. So I'd done the TT in 83 and won that. Suzuki gave me a chance for 84 to go and do quite a few um, uh, Grand Prix. And the purple patch was, um, went to Salzburg for the first time, qualified on the front row, finished fifth. You know, this big guy. In that, they're going, <laughs> yeah, walking on paddock and you, you, you can sense people pointing at you yeah. as you go in paddock yeah, going, yeah. that's him, look at the <laughs> side of it. And then, and then uh, the next race we went to Nürburgring, which was the, um, the first time they rode at the, the new Nürburgring, mm -hmm. which was like a strip of brand new tarmac in a mud field. It was bra <laughs> it was pissed down all all uh, week, and it was just one big stripe. But it was a fantastic track. I qualified on the front row again. And bearing in mind, this is between Spencer and Lawson, and, and I'm on the front row, and this from you know this ginger bloke from Scunthorpe, what the hell? <laughs> and then uh, so then I lasted about three laps on that, and then high sided into the mud, and I was. Phew. But by the time I'd washed off, the kid, the guys were packed up and on the way to the Isle of Man. So it was in the middle of the oh, so hell, yeah. the 500 team packed up and, and loaded up and washed it all down. And they were really pleased with me tipping it upside down. Right. So they put it in the truck and they set off to Douglas and I jumped on the flight, got back um, early to, so I could ride this, this 1000cc bike. So so that was right in the middle of the of the GP year and I was riding wow. so sharp. You can imagine yeah. how hard I was riding. So to ride, to come back and ride the TT, um, without not, without still being respectful, I didn't have to ride that hard. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I was so on the ball, you I, know. Yeah, it doesn't. Rubbing shoulders with Freddie Spencer on a shitbox old Suzuki, you know, yeah. every weekend, and going to the TT and like, ooh. And it, yeah, it's and like the, the, the it's the pinnacle of the sport, isn't it? Five hundred cc. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, you're doing it like you say on a on a two year old bike that no one else is riding. Yeah, well, it was just one of them, and, and like Sheen wasn't my best fan, I don't <laughs> think, because like he was like riding it off, and it was it was a. Turd, you know, and, you were showing what and I was do. just riding. I, I was young and I was just desperate to impress, you know. And I was like riding it so over the top, you know, places like Salzburg, which is, but I was just, you know, I was it's a TT a rider. It was, a, you know, <laughs> it's like safe little Armco barriers everywhere yeah. compared to the TT. And and that 500 was it was underpowered, but it was such a great bike to ride. It, you know, when you get a bike which is not a lot of horsepower, but you can ride the wheels off it. Yeah. Well, uh, and that's that. I just love that time in my career. It's awesome. You so, know. so go back before that. How how did your career in in motorcycling start? Is it a family thing? Yeah, or? my dad. My dad raced. Right. Um, he raced. He raced early in the fifties and showed a lot. Coming over from Ireland, showed a lot of promise. Um, nearly got picked up to ride with thirties with Triumph. Cool. I don't know, but yeah. anyway, there's no money or anything. Then and then he had a chance to go speedway riding. I don't know how that happened. I think it was just like it just, that man's fast on the bike. He can never go on that, you know. Yeah. Anyway, he he he, he stopped. Uh, he, he retired to concentrate on his business and work, and and then started again. Probably thirty years later, just doing national and club level, and yeah. And we raced, uh, and I, so then I was traipsing around as a kid. Yeah. On my little. Grass a bike running around Cadwell Park, and I used to go to love to go to Snetterton because I could get me on the 50 out and go blasting, <laughs> have miles to ride around there. You're always going to go racing. And when I started, um, I remember when, when I was thinking about, well, I was going to start when I was 16, and I was crapping myself since I was like 14, I think, about starting, trying my dad's <laughs> leathers on. <laughs> trying his leathers on. I'd, go, I'd, go, I'd get his leathers on about a year before, and I'm like, oh. And then eventually it was all going to happen, and um, we ended up racing together, me and my dad. My dad was still racing. Wow. So he was like. He so that didn't push you into it. It was purely oh, your own. Oh dad. yeah, totally. I was mad for it. I was totally mad for it. My mum, my mum pushed me in more than my dad. Really? My mum, my mum was pretty. Uh, she wanted to be. To get, and I, I, I remember one ride at Brands Hatch. I had a massive slide at, on my seven fifty. I totally crapped myself. And my mum saw it all. And I come in and I go, oh, I can't do that. She's get back out there. Right? <laughs> She's, she's <laughs> give you a clip around the ear or get back out there what's wrong with you brilliant so, that's what you need in the moment so yeah, yeah she I'll was see where you totally get it opposite. from now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah Bob so yeah. first first ever race then where was it oh well Cadwell go, cut my teeth yeah. at Cadwell and um, and it you know just it's great talking like this because it just I'm just drifting back now and just the nerves of your first race my god you've been there for years watching it and with your dad, and then and then now it's your turn. I mean, I started with a 400 for Honda, which is a road bike, mm -hmm. and I just literally took the took the lights off and put some number plates on. But it was a brilliant starter bike, and it, again, it was one of them bikes where you had to ride so hard. I'm sure that was my, my best grounding you could ever have, and learning to ride a Cadwell. If you can master Cadwell, you oh, pretty yeah. much could take that 
take that knowledge of how to go around Cadwell with you anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so my first race was um, at Cadwell, and back in the day, um, I don't know if everybody knows about Cadwell, but you used to park at the top of the mountain, and uh, and there would, there would be a race going around the club circuit, so it it turned right at the hairpin before the mountain, mm -hmm. and and just do a mile and a half around that back section. I mean, there was so it used to be every weekend there was millions, so many races, weren't there? So we'd enter my first race, and then so you go from the paddock and you go to a. What hold. year was this, Rob? This was seventy-seven. <clears throat> yep. So um, the, the 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 race you'd be holding in the holding area in the, in the paddock, and you drop down into the a parking next area, which was on top of the mountain where they used to feed you out. Yeah. So you wait, and there's one race going around there. Then the, that race would stop, and then let you go down backwards. And you go and park up on the top of the old, uh, and the, uh, the, the, there would be one race waiting there, and you park at the top of that, and the other race would feed down to the grid. And while you're there, they come around with a the bag to pull your number. Was pull it pegs? Little yeah, pegs. Yeah, little yeah, pegs. Pull the yeah. peg out of the bag. Yeah. Pull the peg out of the bag. So you're like, whoa. Like that. <laughs> for so qualifying. Brilliant. No, no, that's for the race. Well, for race straight, position. Yeah, straight yeah, for yeah, race yeah. position. But the thing with that Honda was, I mean, I was big. I was probably even bigger then. Um, but that Honda... I had such an amazing technique of starting it. It was a 404, and I'd just leave the clutch out, to put it in first gear, leave the clutch out, and just rock it like that, and go. And they're going, he's got, he's got a pretty starter motor on it. <laughs> and honestly, I was gone. No one could beat me from the line. I could just had to rock the... Just, I didn't have to paddle it. Like, everybody was yeah. jumping. Everybody was on the side of the bikes running or paddling. I'd just literally leave the clutch out and rock it like that, <laughs> and it would fire up, and I'd be gone. And there'd be people moaning and complaining. Anyway, I didn't have a starter motor, but it was a completely standard bike. They all caught me up eventually. But, Did you have um, to make sure it was right on the point of just, compression? Just, yeah, just like that, exactly. Yeah. And leave your clutch there. It'd take, it'd take <laughs> half a step and it would fire. And I just practised it in my garage at home for hours. <laughs> But um, I could just fire It did help away. having a big lad from Sky pushing yeah. it as well. I had a few kilos <laughs> pushing it. But, so I'd get some amazing starts and they'd all catch me and have a, have a tussle. But it was um, it was a perfect bike for learning. It didn't cost anything. Literally, I ran it for two years and I put a kickstart oil seal in. That's all I did. <laughs> you know, I wasn't technical or uh, yeah. But just put it, clean it up, put it in my garage, pull it out on a Sunday and just go. How quickly did things move on from that? Well, um I started, I started winning fairly, fairly quickly on that bike, or up front with that bike, because it was nowhere near competitive. So it, was, it was at a time when... Did you win your first meeting? No. No, no, no. No, sorry, mate. <laughs> I wasn't to quite your level. But, um, <laughs> but I just... And again, I just used to love it. I just, it. There was no real plan. Just like... And I never ch looked for a championship or followed anything. I just looked, right, what's on? Where are we going? With my mates and just fill, fill the van up and just... just off, go, you off we went, yeah. Um... So that was the 400, and, it, and I was riding on um, TT Dunlop TT under road bike tyres, and I was just riding the wheels off it, and then a couple of mates, and like a guy called Peter Hubbard, remember? Him? Yeah. Yeah, from Lincoln, think, yeah. really, really fast guy. He said, Rob, I'm going to get you some tyres, and he gave me some um, Metzler, I think it was some Metzler thing, or maybe some Michelin things, and they were unbelievable, but I know I was riding these road bikes, and my God, this Magic is unreal. <laughs> so, then, uh, so then I started... Doing pretty well, and I had a brilliant year on that first year. Just loving it, just lo so looking forward to the weekend, and just just loading up and going with the mates, and we camp out in the van, and it was just proper club racing. Yeah. And then the next year we upgraded the bike. We put a Yoshimura camshaft in it. <laughs> that was it. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and that really took me miles up. Anyway, so I did two years on that, and then bought a Yamaha which my mum at the time was not happy because people were getting killed on Yamahas. The old <laughs> Yamahas were seizing up and there was the death bike. Two-stroke. Yeah. yeah. Why, are you buy, why are you buying this? Oh, well, I've got to have a Yamaha. No, you, why are you doing that? So anyway, I went to Bill Smith Motors in, in Chester and bought this uh, 350TZ off a guy, a guy called Graham Waring who'd been killed. <laughs> oh. So I know it's not that bit. It was, um, I know, so my mum's like, what? Hey. So I got this bike and I was so excited about getting this TZ350. Never ridden one, never even, never even had a run on a TZ. And at the time, from a 400 Honda to a 350TZ, mm -hmm. they're unbelievable. And I was so excited, we've got to get out. So I went to this airfield, where Hemswell Airfield, which Steve will know, on, on just after Christmas Day, massive big ice puddles like this, and I'm warming this TZ up. <laughs> anyway, so that was, that was my... Uh, um, your initiation initiation to, so yeah. I, I got on it I'm like oh my god the power bomb is amazing so the very first race I went to I didn't quite win it but 
I crashed the very first race <laughs> uh, on the Saturday. I crashed Carroll Park. I crashed, and the bike wasn't, wasn't that much of a mess. Took it home because I was racing Sunday as well. Took it home with my mates, bodged it up, came back with like uh, Kellogg's box number plates on it, and I won six <laughs> races. Men uh, yeah. And was was, yeah. was Dad mentoring mentoring you at no, this time? No, no, Dad, Dad. Um, didn't want to come. He was retired then, and he didn't want to come. He couldn't. He, he was really funny because he's such a lovely bloke. Honestly, he, he was such a mild, lovely bloke. He couldn't face not racing. Yeah, or, he, he yeah. wanted to race so much that he just yeah. didn't want to come. It was really funny. He didn't come for he didn't come for years, and he started started when I started getting a bit better, and he started come along. And um, the same, he missed he missed a lot of my best years because they were working abroad. But yeah, at that time, he struggled not to do it himself, you know. And he's not like that. So it was really a really bit funny because um, he was such a lovely mellow bloke unless I flipping tripped him out you know how his temper would come out <laughs> but it was really weird that he, he didn't want to come anymore um, like so how did you get your first break into a team or you know uh, yeah. into the real deal well it was again a lot of luck I mean I, I was riding that 350 then and it was a fairly old one but I was riding it really well but there's so many guys around who were so much better than me a massive um, in that era. Massive the three hundred and fifty um, class was unbelievable. Mm. They had two, usually two heats to get in, and there was so many guys: Peter Rubbard and Peter Wild, um, Richard Pierce Jones. There's just so many guys, so fast everywhere you went. If you went down south, you'd bump into Keith Ewan and people like that. It just so fast, and um, I just got super lucky. My mum, mum and dad uh, knew this chap called Frank Gallen, who was a local, uh, an Irish friend of theirs but he had a local business and we got he's mad on his bikes and he got really chatting to him and he, and he started to sponsor me a little at a time just get me going and then got into it and um and just just gave me a break but i still spent a few years well I did the, we did the 350 and then frank's going you need a bigger bike <laughs> <laughs> i think he's putting the obvious out i think yeah. you need a bigger bike <laughs> and then uh, so we ended up buying the 750 um and it's graham wood graham wood was from scunthorpe and uh, he's my local top rider and uh went and bought his bike off him and that was when it all got a little bit scary it was a bit serious then and the 750 I couldn't ride it i was just I went into the main class and i was just so far out of my depth and just crashing my brains out all the time and to a point where um End of eighty one, I think it was. Frank was still bankrolling it and keeping it running, it. and I said, "It's not going. It's not working, Frank. We're wasting your money." You know, I was crashing out of tenth and twelfth, and never looked really? like. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't touch it out. I mean, they were beasts, weren't they? Yeah. If you didn't if you didn't know how to <clears throat> ride them, or if you want, they would just spit you off. And I just crashed my brains out. And I said to Frank, I said, "It's not really worth it." And he's like, "Right, listen, come on, we'll have one we'll one more go. We'll have next year. We'll have a right go." And he just he just, with his with that. I went away and I was stopped smoking, <laughs> stopped eating pies, and uh, I lost about flipping three stone over winter. Train, train my nuts off, started running, got addicted to all that stuff, and I come out. And I remember that the the first race we went to, um, I think Gary Padgett, Clive Padgett, and uh, going, "Well, oh, Robbie, have you been poorly over Christmas?" <laughs> <laughs> Not like, "Oh, you look good. You've been fair. Have you been poorly?" <laughs> so. Um, so, and that was it. And the very first race was Cadwell Park. It was the big international. And I finished third to Sheen and Roger. And it's like, poof, what the hell? Honestly, from going and do, and I would, because like back in the day, you wouldn't go practicing. Yeah. Like, you just turn up. There was no no practice planned or you didn't do anything. You just turned up at a race day and did what you could. You'd probably get a six minute practice. And all. So I just turned up. I had the bike all painted new. I was slimmer version. I was been desperate to, to do well for Frank. Frank had, put a big commitment into me and, and kept me going. I said, right, I want to really try and repay him. And the first race is like, what the hell? I had no idea what happened. And that year was just like that. I was just, I was knocking Roger off every weekend. I was mixing with the factory okay. team. <clears throat> and then that and that was it then. So it was massive thanks. It wouldn't have happened to, without Frank. So when did the, the TT come on the horizon then? At what, at what point did you look to it and go, I could have a, I could have a go at this? Well... Again, I just seem to, you're making, you're giving me all the memories now, and I just think what a badly organised person I was. <laughs> he just all tripped into everything, you know. But I had a, I had a friend, um, Charlie Thompson, um, who was racing uh, at 250, and he was, and all, my bikes were always sheds, you know, they were just, I wasn't mechanical, I just, just, just wanted to ride them. But his bikes were always mint. And uh, well, I'll tell you a bit of a story about Charlie. Um, he, he had a 250. Yeah, 
beautiful. I can't remember what the special frame on it, but really lovely, lovely bike. And uh, I'd crashed my 350. He said, you can have a go on my 250. I went, whoa, really? And um, he said, yeah, you can have a ride on it if you want. This is a Cadwell, same meeting, same sort of meeting, park at the top. So I was, I was late, I had to change the numbers. He was doing the 250 race and I was doing the 350 race on his 250. So we're messing around changing the numbers, got the numbers there, so I was late. So the holding group at the top, I had to shoot past them, get back to the other pits where the guy's putting your peg on. As I got up there, I lost the front on the grass. <laughs> and, and Cassie's beauty, and he was, sat, he was sat on the start line bank there waiting. He saw me coming around and <laughs> Cassie's bike on the grass. And the bloke, I'm picking it up and the bloke runs over and puts me the peg on the screen and just get down there. <laughs> So anyway, so there's a chap called Charlie Thompson, lovely, lovely guy. He says, that, um, you have to have a go at the Manx. Because yeah, he did the Manx a few times, yeah. just for fun. He wasn't he want really uh, a, a, a race winner time. He was just loving the journey. She should have a go at the Manx. And if, anyway, the one year passed. And he says, come on, we'll go together, we'll get organised. So that was it. That was the love affair, really. Uh, up until then, I'd been to the TT quite a few times with my dad, but never really had a, a big um Just drive. to watch? Yeah. Yeah. My dad never raced there, but um, yeah, just used to watch and do the whole Fantasy Island thing. Um, but never had a really ambition to, to go to TT. It's mm -hmm. just short circuits. I was just desperate to ride short circuits. And then the Manx came and it's like, oh my God, this was so, unbelievable. So that was 79. 79 I've got in my yeah. notes here. Yeah. Newcomers Junior Race. Newcomers. Fell at White Gates on the last lap yeah. while leading. 30 second lead, actually. <laughs> Remounted, yeah. which you'd never get nowadays. No, I just, I just, I, don't, I never heard of anybody crashing white gates. How, how did well, you manage? Don't people? Well, you know, well, I don't know, the the, 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 the ripples. Got... Back in the day when it was a proper road race, you know, not a smooth. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, the ripples were a nightmare, but everybody knew about it. He went up May Hill and just a little left kink, and everybody knew. And I don't know. Well, I think I was already doing my victory speech and thanking, <laughs> thanking all. The, next thing. Chatted and went down like, oh my god! And, and before the bike, the bike was still sliding, and I was still chasing it. And I picked it up, and I never even thought I just jumped and went. I mean, what a crazy! Wow. I know. Yeah. Oh, wow. and TT. I just jumped and set off. And um, and I still never went that hard. A thirty second, I thought, mm, laying on the floor, sliding on my back, fifteen seconds, picking it up, two seconds. I have still got a ten second lead. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to work it, so I didn't even go that, hard and I lost it by two seconds. Oh, yeah. yeah, Roger Luckman. Unbelievable. And I still jump out of bed at night. <laughs> you, you, you say you don't hear many people crashing at White Gates. You don't hear many people crashing at Waiter Grid either, do you? No, no that's true. Yeah. Yeah, very, yeah, good point. Uh, we haven't got to parade lap yet, have we? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go there now? No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, uh. But 1981, your web bike broke the lap record from a standing start for the Manx. Did I? Yeah. Well, so my notes say. All right. Well, that 80, because I missed a year, and then I went back on a 750, and um, that was the max, yeah, and um, I had a tyre. I think I think I had, a, I had an inner tube. No one was running inner tubes, but I didn't. I had an inner tube. Everybody was filling <laughs> up with nitro. Yeah, I had an inner tube. <laughs> and it's, uh, and I, I got a flat tyre when, when I was arrived at Ramsey, because for the just went flat and I stopped and, and took my YouTube out and he was just like gone <laughs> and like going, what the f are you wearing a YouTube? <laughs> so I didn't know. It so was just like a melted mess like that. So somehow I survived, I survived that. So that was that. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I went back in 82 so I can tell you some good stories about the 82. But 82 yeah. was the TT. The you, TT, you, yeah. You promoted yourself. I'd gone to the, the TT. TT, yeah. And um, the, the, again, on my 750, um, we sort of, Done all the, done all the uh, the plan for the pit stops and all that sort of stuff and calculated what we needed. And to get a chap called Don Briggs who was working for me, who's a legendary sort of Lincolnshire tuner, isn't he? Yeah. Roger Marshall and and that. And I was working for his from his workshop in Rugby, so Don came over to to help me that week. So we had it all worked out. And this what was this Rob? Seven fifty what? Uh, I think it was the classic seven fifty TZ. Oh TZ, yeah, so yeah. two stroke. Yes, Sorry, yeah. two stroke, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, the race started, I don't know if it was what, which one it was, it must have been the classic or something, I don't know. Uh, but it was a bit iffy. And, I, and um, I've never, I never, never up for riding in the rain and the roads at all. I got caught out a couple of times, but never, I was really lucky. And it was a bit iffy, this. So I set off the first lap and got to suss out where it was a little bit dry and okay. And then, and then the second lap. And then, um, I, don't think, yeah, I can't remember, I can't remember how many laps I've got now. But anyway, basically the story is, Oh, Don's there waiting for the f for, to fill me up on my pit stop lap, and he sees a light coming, and he comes and he's and I go <laughs> like that. And they're waiting there, and he's like, 
was that him? They're like, yeah. Oh, so, so I got to Kurt, I got all the way to Kurt Michael and pulled up, and, and I didn't have any. I didn't even think to check the tank. I never had any idea what because I, I was somewhere else. Um, never thought that I'd missed a stop, and uh, I never even thought to look at the tank. What's right? I'm sat there waiting, thinking this is broke. Not being very technical, and Don come up and I says, um, Don, the front, it just just died on me. He said, We well, didn't. Can you hear me? I swear. Can you swear? No, no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He didn't fucking stop for any fuel. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> I was just so engrossed in the whole thing. And I, and I sat there for like three hours waiting for him, thinking what what he'd done wrong with a bike. Or, exactly. Or with, think, and then he got there. <laughs> I didn't, even, I didn't think one minute to look in the petrol tank. I probably could have got some gas and got, got some fuel, yeah. Um, oh, so man. that was 82. So. <laughs> Blimey hell. And then, so your first win came in um, 83. So 83 came and then went, went with it. from going in 82 and being a privateer and, and sort of, in 82 I was, I was known then because I was sort of knocking on the door in the short circuits. So uh, I wasn't totally sort of, the normal privateer who's looking over the window at, at, at the factory teams in the thing. So I was getting a bit closer, but it was like that. You know, you go to that TT yeah. and you go down the front and uh, what's the, the big hotel where they always used to stay? I can't remember now. But you'd look through the windows and see all the Suzuki guys and the Honda guys. Oh, and quite a few in Claremont. And the, yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a big one sat by Majestic. I don't know, it's really posh looking. Castle, Castle Mona. Ah, Castle Mona. Castle Mona, yeah. yeah. So they always used to stay in there, all the Suzuki trucks, and you'd walk past and see like Rex White having his dinner and all the factory <laughs> teams. And now I turned up and I'm one of them now. You know, I'm, I've, I've arrived in the factory team. It's like, it was surreal. They stayed out in the... Um, uh, um, your bosses, um, Hector's, Hector's friends got a big, like, stately home. They all oh, stayed in right, there. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, so 83 come, and bearing in mind what happened in 82, I had pit boys saying, here, you wanker, stop. <laughs> Second lap, stop. <laughs> I had big, big, all sorts of abuse on my pit boys. <laughs> so, and that was... Um, Can't that, miss it. That was Alec Bomber <laughs> yeah, from Crow yeah, Tree yeah. Leathers who came, and God, he was pit signalling for me at... Uh, oh, was he? He was pit signalling at Bless Governor's. Him. Yeah, is it like the governor's? Yeah, he was like, governor's dip. like, come on, like that with pit board <laughs> pulling. In. Ah. So um, you never so, yeah. missed another pit stop again. No, never, no. So eighty three, yeah. So, but that, I mean, there's a crazy story around that. I mean, that was a, that again was just an unbelievable week of of. It was my I'd signed for Suzuki. I was doing really well in UK. I was racing with Garden on the short circuits, and and uh, then I arrived at a TT and and. and not uh, without any expectations really although you know Rob Short Circuit rider we did pretty well last year let's see what he can do so um, so that whole week was amazing with Granty as my teammate we had so much press going on Ted McCauley the, from the mirror we're doing this and that we're doing all sorts of chats and it was an amazing buzz and you started walking around in your Suzuki gear you know people are like, looking at you yeah yeah it's like oh man and um, just different level, isn't it? From where you're scraping to to get anywhere. We, we've had him in as as a, as a guest as well, Granty. Have you? Yeah, right. not long ago. Yeah. Um, what was he like as a teammate? Oh, he's brilliant. He's well, he's brilliant, but he's competitive, <laughs> very competitive, and a bit of a fat. <laughs> fiddling around with his bike. I mean, he was so technical with his bike, and he had Nigel t turning it inside out. Where you know it looked like oh, a bit. I think it might rain, Nigel. You need to, need to change the offset. Let's do it. I'm like. <laughs> You know, just flipping, just put the fuel in, let's go. <laughs> but it was a really good crack, and I got on with him because I was a trials rider. Yeah. So he sort of, he, he took me under his wing, and we used to go running together. He's such a fit old boy. Yeah. He loved his running and all that. We used to go running together. And 78 now. I'd say no way is he yeah. really. Still riding well, trials, yeah. yeah, fair play. Yeah, I've not, I haven't seen him for a while. I used to bump him to him at trial. So talking about yep. names, obviously, you know, you quickly went through in the Grand Prix stuff. You had some massive, you know, like my hero when I first started racing, Kevin Swan. Mm. He's your teammate. You yeah. Know? And you snuck yeah. him about a bit. Well, he had to be put in place a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they just as we moved away from from the UK, it just ended up getting you know it's just mad. The journey went was crazy, really. I've got I've got a feeling we're going to be talking loads, and if we start talking about Grand Prix now, yeah, which I was, is exactly I was just where in I the middle. Of, I was just in the middle of my TT story. There's something coming good, and you just, you just <clears> Steve always ends up spoiling it. Just send me off on a different way. I mean, you got so many stories. I know, I've got some, I know. I don't just think we can share them all with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's try, let's test that theory. Right, finish your TT right, story, okay. then we'll, we'll we'll end part one, and then we'll we'll come back next week. All right, cool. To get all the 500 CC stories. All right, cool. Right, go for it. Well, the the 83. So the 83, the whole 
thing of being there as a factory rider with Mick Grant. You know, Mick Grant, the legend, he's one of my heroes, and now I'm his teammate, young kid. Um, so all that week was amazing. So the first race went really well, I finished third. Uh, and I love that bike, it was the XR 69000. It was a beautiful bike for the TT, just talky. And, and I was riding it really well in the on the short circuit, so I, I was totally at home with it. So then the uh, Classic come, and um, in the morning of the Classic, it'd been a bit of dodgy weather, so um, I wanted to do a quick lap of the track and drop off my signalers. I had one guy at Windy Corner and then somewhere else. So I set off in me Opel Manta Berlinetta. <laughs> Man, it, I was the man. The oh yeah, it? red, red cloth. <laughs> Eighteen. Red cloth. And, oh, it's beautiful. So I set off. Can you see magic. how proud he is? I was. <laughs> it was. So I set off with me and my girlfriend and the and the cameraman who was signalling for me. And I set off all the way to Ramsey. Got to Ramsey, dropped him off at uh, at um, Gooseneck, and set off. And I got to um, Windy Corner, and the guy said, "Oh, they're starting to close the road. You need to sort of get off at the next stage." I'm like, oh, okay, "All right." So I went down to Craig. And there's a policeman in the middle of the road, stood there, off the road, sir. Uh, I'm like, they're closing the roads now, off the road. He said, no, no, but um, I need to get back to, no. He said, you're going to have to get off the road here. I said, if I went round the back there, that was it. You'd miss the race. So I says, mate, I'm in the race. I'm Rob Macklin, I'm Suki. He said, oh, get who you are, <laughs> get off the race. So I reversed <laughs> like this, and I'm looking at the, my girlfriend, and I just floored <laughs> it in this flipping policeman <laughs> with his white hat on, dived over the bonnet, and the crowd were going <laughs> mental. <laughs> And I shot off, <laughs> and uh, they were all waving at me as they went round the crib. <laughs> so, um, so I got back, and I hid my car around the back, and I rushed up there, and uh, and I got, and I said to the, the Suzuki boss, I said, "Bloody, I've had a big moment. There was a policeman up there, and you might be getting a, you might be getting a, a visit." <laughs> so uh, anyway, got on, I got on, to, went out onto the line, and some um, <clears throat> some guy was interviewing me. And I said, I just had to apologise the, to the police guy, the Craig, uh, the Craig but I, in no way I could go around the back. I wouldn't have made it, and I'm really, really sorry. All right, so anyway, I went in the race. Got in the race, I won the race. Managed to win the race, amazing. Having a big session in the R10, the Rio Hotel, and the police turned up and dragged me out. Yeah, they dragged hey, me out. out. Sat really? me in the car, sat me in the car, give me back bollocking, then laughed the nuts off. They were just, <laughs> they came to find me, literally, yeah. and they and they gave me a right moment, I tell you, but there was... But it was, yeah, so there was Brilliant. a bit of a backstory to that first win. <laughs> so, I could, <laughs> so I was pretty lucky there. That's amazing, man. Yeah, so I was lucky. But, but amazing, that first win was just... And my mum was there for that. My dad wasn't. My dad was working away, but my mum was there for that. It's so, amazing. So, yeah, it's good. Loved it. Right, let's end part one there, and we will see you next week for part two.